Hello viewers, Super GT here. This is the Alsace test course and it has to be one of the weirdest circuits in the game. I mean, look how strange this corner is. It resembles something more like a roller coaster than it does a racing circuit. But we took it on in one of the recent Nations Cup events and here's my attempt at taking this corner. This is what it looks like when you actually drive around it. See, it loops around for a very long time then drops down very suddenly and flicks over to the left at the bottom of the hill very strange corner it took a while for me to get used to it these are my practice attempts and this is actually a very bad attempt try to get it right you have to actually get very very close to the inside wall uh, for as long as possible which is exactly what i wasn't doing there but let's jump into the first race then first attempt of getting a good score here and as you can see we're driving the subaru wrx and it was quite a weird combination because of course the track is quite a weird track let's let's go for a lap now just just to show you what the track is but then you also uh, you also had these cars uh, these rally cars which were fairly slidey and it made for quite an interesting combo it, it really felt like a rally cross race to be honest and you'll see just how ferocious it gets when we do get into the actual race so this is my qualifying lap, this is my best lap that I did in the qualifying session. You see here, just really getting as close to the guardrail on the inside as you possibly can. And then really committing to that left hand at the bottom. You have to be very brave, turn in early, get to the curb, get to the wall. And just hope that you don't hit the wall. And then you've got this very long, banked right-hander. So all sorts of very strange corners on this circuit. And that's what makes it quite difficult, especially with this kind of car. Just in the line there to do a 49.3. And that was my best lap of the session. And you see a little bit later, uh, cutting across the corner, going a little bit wider. This shows you, if you just commit a little bit too much, you can easily go off onto the grass. But uh, ultimately, it was an eighth position. It was a very, very close qualifying. But this is the race. Let's jump in. Uh, trash control on one to get a better launch off the line starting p12 i was only a few temps off pole but that was only good enough for p12 into the first corner then fair amount of contact and i think that's just be that's actually being quite liberal on the exit uh, maintaining p12 although actually we've got kind outside we do have the inside now for this long right hander and you see everyone aiming for the inside as much as possible lots of contact and that is very characteristic of uh, rallycross really and it's gonna be very much mimicked here in this race lots of cars making contact as we go into the banked corner and then eventually we are we gonna settle into single file no not really four abreast there almost just in front just to really show you exactly how mad this race was gonna get uh, matthew there with a poor start i think he must have got nerfed wide at some point Dropping down to 12th, I'm up into 11. Going to look up the inside here. And then we receive a small tap from behind. And unfortunately that guy there gets... Uh, is on the receiving end of it, ultimately. And uh, we go up into ninth position. But that is really how these races kind of play out. A lot of elbows out. And then the Frenchman comes back up the inside again. Elbows out. That's kind of just how it is in these rallycross races. And the bottom of the hill. Oh my goodness, it's gone completely wrong. Then we're going to get collected and meet our good friend Barry R and find ourselves way down the order. P16 out of 16, dead last, miles off the pack, very little hope of achieving anything. And sounds like me at school. Anyway, uh, by lap 8, I was in a fight to not finish last. And then thankfully this Frenchman, well he helped me out really not himself by just driving off the track and that granted us 15th an amazing finish wow 15th out of 16 so that was uh, my first attempt very bad but what i did do is save the replay and i wanted to take a look at what the top guys were doing this was the, the guy who won the race and as you can see there you might have spotted something different the slight use of the handbrake yes and to be fair, if we're in rally cars, you know, handbrake, that's kind of normal, I guess. And uh, the line into this uh, banked corner was a lot closer to the inside, and I, I, I think I was turning in too late. So armed with this 
newfound information, jumped into the decal uh, shop, changed up the livery on the car, and for the next race, I set a very similar lap time in qualifying and found myself this time in fourth position on the grid. So let's see how we can go uh, this time. Just covering the inside here. And I think I do break it a slight bit too late here. And we say hello to our Dutch friend on the, on the left hand side there. As he then says hello to the barrier I think. We lose a few positions. Coming up the hill I'm in P2. Albeit after a very aggressive start. Into the back of the Italian here in the lead. Through the back to the corner we've got contact from behind. It's all kicking off. You see on the radar there's about 8 gazillion people. More contact on the way through. And then the Ukrainian goes through. I'm going to have to cover the inside here into the long right-hander. Really commit early. And that is the thing we definitely weren't doing in the first race. So getting a nice line through there is actually nice and defensive as well to protect the, the inside and make sure no one goes up to your inside. My main job now is really to keep up with the top two. The top two in qualifying were quite a lot quicker. They were, two, uh, sorry, half a second faster than pretty much everyone else. And therefore, if I could keep up with them, that would be great. Uh, the, the guys behind having a very almighty battle. And it sounds very good. But, well, it's good for me because I'm pulling away now. But it's not good for them. Any fighting normally results in time loss. And that is exactly what is happening to them right now. Now, my main objective, as we've said, really just to try to keep up with this top two as long as possible. Perhaps they'll start fighting and then it'll give me an another chance. But let's see, into the, final, in, into the final corner. Actually, it's not the final corner, it's the penultimate corner. Because we do round out the lap with a slight kink to the left here. Which kind of looks easy, but you do have to commit early. Otherwise, you, you hit the wall on the pit straight. Now, by lap four, it turned out that the exit here and the left-hander, that's where the guys in front were really gaining their time. You can see there just how close I was through the long right. And then on the descent down the hill, they just pull away. And ultimately, by the end of the race, 15 laps later, I came through to finish in P3. Solid result. Seven seconds away from the lead of the race. But ultimately, quite happy with that. Um, a fairly safe race. Quite an aggressive start. But uh, we bank ourselves 287 points. It was actually a very solid total. Anything towards 300, I think, is a, is a solid total for me, at least. But the next one, I was half a second off. I shouldn't have really done another one. I mean, 287 points is good. I just felt like risking it and going for it all, you know. So here we are. We find ourselves in race number three, ninth on the grid, up the inside, into the middle. And about 8 million pieces of contact through here. Someone off on the grass, grazing across barrier. Loss of contact. Oh my goodness. I'm going to go into the middle of the three here. What position, uh, what position do I find myself in? Can't quite get my words out. Well, I was P6 momentarily, but then I'm dropped all the way down to P11. Just shows you one little moment on the opening lap. And you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. And boom, you've lost eight positions. But can we just pause it there and just, just admire the amount of cars right behind me at this exact moment. So if I get this corner wrong, I'm absolutely screwed. Thankfully, I get the exit. So the entry right and remain in P9. Okay, so it's roughly where we started, so it's okay. It was a bit of a topsy-turvy lap, that. We went up, we went down, and we shook it all around, but we ended up in the same place. Into turn one, lap two. You can see a fairly close little battle here between a good five or six cars, and fairly similar to the previous race, just beginning to edge clear of the group behind, which is always good news, you know, in racing. Not having to worry about someone behind you trying to overtake you. You can just focus on what's going on in front, and what's going on in front is the Frenchman elbows out up the inside, and he goes actually wide. Oh my goodness, I, I didn't know where that car was going to come out of the ghosting phase. Come out right in front of me, had to go to the left, get the position, but he's going to immediately get it back here as he fires it up the inside. I did not cover it off early enough. We're gaining positions, we're losing positions, we're gaining another one. I'm up into eighth at this point. Can we get 7th up the inside? It's quite a tricky place to go for it. These cars are very loose on the handling. You do have to time your braking dead right into this corner. Up the inside, all over the grass. Oh my goodness. That is a quintessential rally cross overtake where you just basically barge your way through and then into the strangest corner of the game. 
up here. Um, well, he's actually nipped himself up the inside, and there's not much I can do about that. And he's go he goes through, as does his teammate. No, not quite. I'm saying he's his teammate. I don't know if he is, but he's just got the same livery, so I'm going to say he is. Into the long banked corner. And we get the line, the entry line right. We're getting it a bit better and just trying to improve our consistency here. This will probably be quite a slow lap given the amount of, uh, the sheer amount of fighting that occurred is a 50.5, 50.6, sorry. We need to be in the 49s ideally, uh, especially in the early phase of the race. And I'll just go really wide. Forget to turn. There was definitely a right-hander there somewhere, but um, I think I didn't really get the memo and forgetting to turn, essentially. I lose the position. I'm back down to ninth. I'm all over the place. I mean, this race, it really, it really was a manic one. I think it's fair to say. Uh, this combination, rally cars, around a very unusual circuit. I've said that so many times, but I think you get the gist. It was quite a weird one to get used to, and it's just not really something you race very often in this game. It's not something that will come up all that much. And therefore, it's quite interesting to see it come up. And I thought, you know what? I've got to give this one a go. Um, this was lap number six, and we find ourselves in a nice little battle here for P7 with a trio of Frenchmen as we head down the hill, committing nicely to the apex of the left hander or the bottom of it, going over the crest, and then looking for the 150 ball, get the car turned in nice and early. There is a fair amount of understeer in this car. Three abreast from the Frenchman up in front. Fantastic scenes here at Alsace. It's actually their home circuit for the Frenchies. Uh, Alsace being in the uh, south of France area and then oh, I don't know where that other French guy went actually he just completely disappeared presumably teleported into the shadow realm or something similar uh, so he has met his fate uh, at, at the hands of the big banks corner I don't know where he went who knows and uh, we find ourselves now in P8 so we're having a good little scrap here with some other guys and that's good to see even if it isn't towards the front of the pack committing very close to the barrier there on the apex and we're going to whip it forward a couple of laps here to lap number 8 as we head through the bank's corner this is where this guy behind was uh, it was well a couple of sneaky little overtakes and I know elbows out is the name of the game here but we just nerf you wide slightly mid corner and then through he goes and it was quite annoying so I, I kind of thought well you know what if you want to if you want to race like that I'm going to accidentally forget you know I'm going to accidentally not break into the next corner and what do you know went to the side of him and then this one I mean that was all me I just braked way too late so you know just did not have the consistency I wanted I was trying my best I was trying my best but it just wasn't happening across the grass we go and this really is Rallycross now. They just need to add a joker lap, I suppose. We just go through the pit lane. That could be the joker lap, couldn't it? Back up the inside. As filthy as this battle is, it was actually quite a good fight. I mean, we were fa fairly well matched. And, uh, oh my goodness, big mistake there. I'm going to drift very wide. And he's quite sensibly going to nip underneath on the exit. And that's a that was quite a common move, actually, what I found to uh, try to get a tighter line and drive off that turn on the inside. And he's done it, to be fair to him. Uh, that was a good move. Not much I could do other than just drive better. If I had just driven better, that would have been ideal. Uh, he didn't really drive better there by uh, going into the apex. He literally hit the apex. And when they say hit the apex, they don't mean hit the barrier on the inside. They mean theoretically, you know, get your racing line correct into this one it was one of those another cheeky sort of nerfy wide overtakes and I, I wasn't really a fan of that so I, I accidentally again you know accidentally went into the side of him purely pure accident it's amazing uh, so I got the penalty three seconds of forcing another car off yeah I felt guilty I let him go back it was a good scrap but very filthy I think it's fair to say and ultimately finishing it in uh, p9 which isn't as good as p3 it's uh, quite a few positions worse actually it's six positions worse there's one more attempt i had to try to improve upon that and that was at the 11 p.m slot i don't know how i was keeping in you know keeping my mind in check because this race was really frustrating to be honest 
Um, but I felt like, you know, I didn't want to end it on such a low point of absolutely sending him to the Shadow Realm. So I felt like, let's do one more. Let's try to get this one proper. You know, let's try to really give it a jolly good go. And this is actually my fastest lap. The fastest lap I did the whole session. Um, I was kind of stuck in the sort of mid to low 49s. Uh, usually like 49.2, 49.3, 49.4, that kind of area. This is going to be a 49.1, this lap you're watching here. I'm already on a 49.1. This is going to be a slightly quicker one. The final corner. Let's take a look, shall we? It's across the line. It's going to be a 49.181. And annoyingly, it only put me 8th on the grid. A very competitive grid, it must be said. Um, three and a half temps off of pole position, and you find yourselves all the way down in 8th. Um, but let's try and make do with that and see what we can do into the first corner going for the outside line and it turned out to be a absolutely horrific decision as we kind of get nerfed wide not sure what happened bit of contact presumably someone goes a bit wider than they'd like and before you know it you're on the receiving end oh well let's continue up into the long right hander plenty of contact and uh, this italian not sure what he was trying there he's in a monster energy car Maybe Jim Carner, Al Sass, who knows. But it didn't really pay off for him. And we find ourselves back in eighth. And it seemed to be very, very much a theme of this race, which is there is no theme. You just can't predict anything. Everything's all over the place. You could go forward, you could go backwards. And uh, ultimately, that seemed to be the trend. Uh, just hope for the best, pretty much. It was one of those. At the end of lap five, beginning of lap number six, into the first corner we go. Let's take a look. What's going to happen here? It looks like we're going to try and nip underneath on the exit. This was the move. This was a quite a good move to try to pull off. Make the other person go a bit too hot on the way in. He actually, he knew it was coming. Once I'm on the inside, this you, you don't have any chance of fighting around the outside of this corner, really. And uh, eventually I caught up with P6. P6 would not be too bad, and... It would be quintessential Super GT, wouldn't it? And that's exactly where we now find ourselves. P6. Sixth position. Absolutely amazing. You love to see it, don't you? And uh, there we go then. I go a little bit wide. There was potential there for the guy behind to re-overtake me, but it didn't quite happen. And this was lap 12. Going on to the final lap of the race... I still had some pressure, you know, to finish in P6, that would not be too bad from P8, I guess. It was quite a hard race to really make a lot of progress in, especially because I just didn't quite have the pace. I just did not have the pace. I was maybe three tenths off where I really needed to be in terms of pure race pace. In this one, I'm only six seconds off the lead after 15 laps, so it's not too bad, but it's just one of them you know you, you turn up to different races sometimes you just don't quite have the pace and that's just how this one was although having said that i think this was top split uh, because it was the last one not many people were on and you know getting a p6 i'll take it it really could be a lot worse so there it is the confirmation of yet another super gt result of p6 i bagged 277 points which was quite a solid total actually and not much less than the 287 that i abandoned but that's the end of this one thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed it i'll catch you next time goodbye